Pharaoh branded him. In the brush, though, Enrique worries less about agents than what awaits ahead of him in the woods. Swarms of bandits carrying Uzis, some on drugs, patrol the three-mile dirt path you will have to use to go around La Aracera. Whereas gangsters rule on the train tops, bandits stay in isolated areas like this. Human rights activists and some police agencies say these bandits commit some of the worst atrocities, rapes and torture. They split, they split what they steal from their victims with the police who allow them to operate there. So not only are you doing these horrible crimes, they're splitting it with the police that are supposed to protect you because they don't care. Migrants hide their money in case they are caught by robbers. Some stitch it into the seams of their pants. Others put a bit in their shoe, a bit in their shirt, or a few coins in their mouths. Others tuck money into their underwear. Others hollow out mangoes or drop their pesos inside and pretend to be eating the fruit. Enrique figures he doesn't have enough money to bother hiding it. He knows bandits catch on to these hiding places anyways. They split open waistbands, collars, and cuffs looking for money. Local residents see groups of migrants walking down dirt roads naked, stripped of everything, just as Enrique had been back in Los Aranos. Migrants who fight back are beaten or worse, the bandits warn. If you say anything to the authorities, we will find and kill you. The police force itself the police force itself is involved in crime and cannot be relied on for help. Many of the abandoned are current or former police officers, the group of Beta Sur, Supervisor Maria Campos Gutierrez. If these bandits are arrested, they pay bribes to police headquarters and quickly are quickly released without any consequences. Witnesses' statements against them mysteriously disappear. For migrants, going to police authorities would be dangerous anyways because they could be deported. Because migrants are on the run, they cannot wait around for months until a trial to testify against the bandits. This makes them ideal victims for robbers to attack. Can that happen to people here? They'd be afraid to go to the cops because they're fearful? No. Doesn't matter if you're legal or not legal in this country, you still have your civil rights, and your civil rights are rights to your property, to your belongings, to your physical harm. So even if someone's hurting you, you can still report to the police and the police cannot deport you. And if they do, you can get a lawyer and the civil rights will sue them. <laughs> they, they don't, because you still have human rights. You might not be a, a legitimate, the same, you might not have your papers to be a citizen, but you still have human rights that everyone has in this country, regardless. Migrants, I'm sorry, all in the bandits long ago intimidated by La Aracero residents were, who consider testifying. If you say anything, they kill you. Better to keep your mouth shut says a local elderly man who was afraid to give his full name. An ice cream vendor near La Aracera adds, if you turn them in, they get out and they come after you. They operate by light of day. There is no law here. The last time Enrique sneaked past La Aracera, he was lucky because he was careful. He stuck with a band of street gangsters. Bandits try to avoid gangsters who are likely to be armed. They prefer to attack someone who can't shoot back. Enrique and the gangsters ran past the group of Mexican men standing by the tracks with machetes at their sides. The men looked at them intensely, but did not move or attack. This time, Enrique is alone. He focuses on the thought that will make him run the fastest. I cannot miss the train. If he misses the one he just left, he knows he will be waiting for days in the bushes and tall grasses until another one comes. Enrique races so fast he feels the blood pounding in his temples. Long wet grass coils around his feet. He stumbles but never stops running. Enrique crawls under a barbed wire fence then under a double strand of smooth wire. It is electrified. At night, locals who live along the train tracks hear the piercing scream of migrants who have been electrocuted by this wire. Help me, help me, they wail. These locals have also found train riders who have lost arms, legs, or heads along the track. Migrants who were injured as they tried to outrun the agents and get off the moving trains. He reaches the cool bridge which spans a stream of murky brown water. This bridge migrants and group of Beta Sur uh, officers say is the most dangerous spot. Bandits hide in the trees waiting to pounce on migrants. They use children as lookouts in exchange for a coin or a piece of candy. The children race ahead on their bicycles to tell the bandits when the migrants are drawing near. As the migrants near the bridge, the bandits drop down and surround them. Other robbers hide along the tracks on the bridge and below it in an area thick with bushes and vines. One bandit fishes in the river or cuts grass with a machete like a field worker and whistles to the others to set the trap. Enrique dashes across the bridge and keeps his pace. If there are bandits in this distance, 
he does not notice them. Mountains stand to his right. The ground is so wet that farmers grow rice between their rows of corn. He can feel humidity rising from the loomy earth. It saps his energy, but he runs on. Finally, he stops, doubled over, panting. He is not sure why, but he has survived while Erosera. Maybe it was his extra caution. Maybe it was that he never stopped running. Maybe it was his decision to hide atop the boxcar instead of jumping off immediately, which meant the bandits targeted migrants ahead of him. He is desperate for water. He spots a house. The people inside are not likely to give him any. The people of Chiapas are fed up with Central, Mi Central American migrants. Central Americans are poorer than Mexicans, and they are seen as backwards and ignorant. <coughs> Many people think they bring disease, prostitution, crime, and take away jobs. They tell of a man from Chiapas who sold chickens in the market and was kind to outsiders. He gave three Salvadorians a place to sleep and work, slaughtering and plucking birds. Salvadorians robbed and killed him. Migrants like Enrique are called stinking undocumented. They are cursed, taunted, dogs are set upon them, barefoot children throw rocks at them. Some use slingshots and shout, go to work, get out, get out. Drinking water can be impossible to come by. Migrants filter ditch sewage through t-shirts. Sewage, like poo and pee that come out of you, that's sewage. So they're having to filter it through a shirt to drink it because they can't even get water. Uh, finding food can be just as difficult. Enrique is counting in some places people at seven or every ten houses turn him away. No, they say, we haven't cooked today, we don't have any tortillas. Try somewhere else. They press the door closed in his face. Many in La Arocera residents lock themselves inside their homes when they hear the train running. Sometimes it is worse. People in the houses turn the migrants in. Enrique sees another migrant who has managed to make it around La Arocera. He too needs water badly, but he doesn't dare ask. To migrants, begging in Chiapas is like walking up to, with a loaded gun. I'll go, Enrique says. If they catch someone, it will be me. Enrique also knows he is less, le less likely to frighten people if he begs alone. Enrique approaches the house and speaks softly, his head slightly bowed. I am hungry. Can you spare a taco? Some water? The woman inside sees injury from the train top beating and he that he took during his last attempt to go north. She gives him water, bread, and beans. The other migrant comes near. She gives him food, too. A horn blows, and Enrique runs to the tracks. He looks all around, trying to spot meager agents who sometimes race ahead in their trucks to catch migrants as they reboard. Other migrants who survived La Aracero come out of the bushes. They spread alongside the train and reach for the ladders on the freight cars. Sometimes train drivers back up the locomotive and get running start. They accelerate to prevent migrants from reboarding up ahead. This time, though, the train is go isn't going full throttle. Enrique climbs up onto a hopper. The train picks up speed, and for the moment, he relaxes. So, so. tell your neighbor one thing you heard today so you remember, because tomorrow you have to come in and do another post like we did yesterday. Hey, neighbor. Or the 30th. So make sure you know because your bell ringer tar is going to be to post about this. So think about it here for a second.